And welcome back to part two of the show. Does seem like we've been given something of a challenge from John. Uh, where in game two in his uh, Blood Wonderful games, he managed to make ten consecutive pawn moves at the start of the game. I'm not going to let that put me off. Uh, I had a plan, and it was to move through from game one to game eight, making one pawn move up to eight to start off the game. So we're now stepping into game seven, and let me see, what was the first challenge that we got in? It was from Thryfex. Uh, so we're going to be, what we're going to do is we're going to aim to start with seven in this game. And hopefully in game eight, we'll start with eight. And then if we can, we'll go on and try and challenge John's target. I mean, I stress if we can. Um, ten is a lot to beat. All right, so we've got three so far. Even that's feeling a little bit tricky. Uh, I'm actually having to analyse here. So he's threatening to play pawn takes d4, c takes d4, bishop b4 check, preventing me from playing any pawn moves. So we have to go e3 so we can recapture with the e pawn. It's, uh, it's more difficult than it looks, guys. Uh, now a3 to overprotect some squares. And it allows me to threaten b4, which is another sensible move. So we can take this way. I think. He's surely... Okay, yeah. That's fine. So that's six. We need one more pawn move. If I go b4, he might go a5. And then... Okay, I think we can manage... We can deal with that. Alright, so that's seven. Perfect. It's annoying. This is actually quite a good position to actually go on for more than ten. Hmm, because I could play h4, h5 here. But you know what? We're not going to do it in this game. There is always next time. He says, moving the bishop. Now I'm just going to make sure that nothing too bad has happened to my position. It actually looks... Something like an exchange slav with just an extra couple of pawn moves thrown in. But because the position isn't wide open, uh, I've kind of got away with the number of pawn moves. And it is easier to do with white than with black. So, yeah. Now, actually managed to get my king castled, got some control of the center, ready to bring this knight out. And you know what? It's time for another pawn move, just because of the amount of control it gives me. Having a knight in a central square like this is great, especially when it's difficult to remove. He can't take it off with a knight, because I'll recapture four king two pieces. Okay, he can take it off with a bishop, but that's also fine with me. Gives me the bishop pair. Uh, what use is the bishop pair in such a blocked position, you might ask? Well, it's a good point, but... What I like to say, as a closed position, it's just a position that hasn't been opened up yet. Uh, yeah, so someday my bishops will be useful. And until then, they will just have to, you know, wait. But yeah, my opponent seems to have gone for a little intermezzo capture on e3 there. Except he doesn't get to regain the piece on e4. So, all in all, probably not worth it. Uh, he should go bishop d7 and b5 here for counterplay. But, not sure what I'm going to do, actually. Maybe just a4 to prevent it. Because I wanted to go king h1 and get out of the way of that pin. But it was just a bit awkward. Uh, and this does allow me to get the queen to leave the vicinity of my king. So he has to go back to g5 and I might make some more pawn moves. Like so. Uh, yeah, this is a, a nice way of dealing with things, I think. Queen probably has to go all the way back. He can go queen 
f5, but then his queen is very short on the squares, and I might be able to trap it. Maybe queen f5, knight d3. Yeah, that would trap it. Alright, he wants to give up a piece for two pawns, but... I mean, I guess it's okay. But it does actually leave him with not very many pieces to actually attack me with. So... I just want to go for a big attack myself. If you've got more material, chances are you should be able to make an attack work. So I want to bring my rook to g3. That seems a sensible thing to do. f5, yeah, I'm not going to take that off. Don't see any reason to give his rook on f8 an entry point into this game. Um, okay, queen d2. Uh, what about knight d3? That threatens bishop c1 and bishop takes h6. So he can go rook c2, which looks aggressive, but I still go bishop c1. And then he's going to lose something. Alright, well, at least my opponent was reasonably predictable in his move. Always makes things easier. So now he either sacrifices an exchange or allows me to take on h6 with a super powerful attack. Uh, okay. So what are his options? Queen c3, bishop takes h6. Queen e2, I'll still take it. He does sacrifice the exchange. Take with the rook so I don't drop the pawn. Have to be careful not to have the knight move away, because I'll drop the rook. But he doesn't have a way of attacking it. He can go f4, maybe. g5 also makes some sense, but... Let's just look after my pieces now. No need for heroics. want to go queen h5. That looks pretty strong. Queen still covers this, threatens that. Maybe g4 here, then I go knight f2. Yeah, that looks good. Hmm. What about knight f4 here? Yep, that again looks pretty good. He can go bishop e8 to stop me from checking, but then there's knight takes here. Uh, king has to go to g8 here. Ah, this seems like it should be in my favour. Don't know if there's a direct finish with King G8, but no. Right, well, let's give the guy a rematch. As we attempt to finish up our round of um, pawn moves in a row. So this is game 8 that I've played tonight. So, 8 pawn moves. Let's count them with me. 1... Uh, I'm already in so many different minds about how I do this. Uh, two. Oh, I can't move the bishop. That's not a pawn. Um, three. Four. Four. Well, I think I like John's idea of having some of them be a recapture, so that... I'm trying to analyse this too far ahead. I have to go e6 first to cover this d5 square. Otherwise he can go queen d5 and attack my rook. Uh-oh. Now if I go c5, then... I'm in trouble. We can get away with... 6... Seven. Eight. And now we're going to push him back with G4. We were, we're going to do this, guys. It's, it's, it's under control. All right, he's trying to prevent nine G4. But we can go H5. So that's nine. Ten. 
10. And then if he takes, we recapture for 11. This is a big moment. Takes is another poor move. But then I'll definitely have to move a piece after that. Uh, is there any other possible sensible pawn move? I have a feeling f5 might be asking a lot from my position. But what the hell. 11. J Jordan's giving me... I can't tell whether or not it's sarcastic clapping. I'm, I'm sure he's really impressed. 12. I suppose I should stop E4. 13. I can't look at my position. Um, um, I can take and play B5. I think that might be a bad thing to do. But we can go 14. We can go 14. 15. And we're developing a piece. Oh, look, I could have taken the pawn on b4. Oh, as soon as I move a piece, it's a rubbish move. Why, why wasn't I taking that pawn? All right, so that was, that was 15. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a new record. So if, if anyone wants to try and beat that, the rules are you also have to, uh, to win the game. And you also... Uh, it can't be just prearranged messing around with your friends. Um, okay. And we haven't won yet. I haven't won yet. This is true. Uh, and I'm down to a minute against two minutes thirty. This is a uh, a little bit hairy, guys. Uh strangely, I still have control of the centre, um, which is odd. My, my two bishops are doing okay from c8 and f8. And both of my rooks, without having moved, are on good squares. My queen is controlling some useful squares. It's just this knight on b8. So, I don't know what I'm even so worried about. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Does that make knight a6 the best developing move in the position? I, I th knight a6 is always the best developing move in the position, John. Okay, I can win material with knight g3, but I'm going to deliberately not do it here. Because it allows him to take on f5. And this knight is kind of holding my position together. And loath as I am to, you know, follow John's advice, it was sarcastic advice. So, I'm playing knight a6. Yay! Yeah. Uh, I have to keep an eye on my clock, because losing on time after this start would be... The definition of tragedy. I mean, Shakespeare has nothing on this. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm threatening to play knight takes pawn on b4. Uh, there's been a lack of commentary other than counting in this game. Because um, reasons of it not always resembling chess. But I'm going to take that pawn off and attack his queen. He's got to go queen b1, otherwise he drops the bishop on d3. I can recapture. Bishop b5 check. Uh, do I want to take and play bishop there? I think I do. That's complicated. I'm not used to positions like this. It's sort of hurting my head. And I need to just make moves. Then are moves. Because 22 seconds and all. Uh, he'll play queen takes, bishop a6. If knight c4, then pawn takes. He's going queen back. I grab this. I'm um, material up. I just have a position that, for some reason, has a few weaknesses in. But I think... I'm not certain knight c4 was good. I mean, it's possible he gets away with it because well, my king is still a little bit open. But I think think I'm okay. Got to, got to concentrate here. It's, will be a disaster if I throw this away. Let's put my rook opposite his king. 17 seconds against a minute. Rook e5 check. We're going bishop e7. He's got no more checks. 
Here I'm material up. I'm literally just thinking checks, captures, what's my opponent going to do? And other than that, I'm going to move fast and hard. That's the name of the game. He would be well advised to get his king off that file sooner rather than later, but I'll just go bishop b7 if he goes king b1. I've got a move planned against pretty much everything. Except that, is what I'm hoping to say. But, uh, looks like he's just not going to move. That would be the one move that I don't have anything planned against. It's just a sullen wait. Ah. Well, yeah, I'm going to recapture that one. Oh, that's a check as well. Uh, let's play running the king. Uh, my opponent has now undertaken me on the clock. It's got 10 seconds against my 17. My king may look vulnerable on c6, but he is lacking pieces to attack with. Uh, Alright, that's the end of the checks for the moment. And there we go. He drops below the accepted time limit. And we do win the game. Don't forget, that did start off with 15 pawn moves. And actually, the game was 29 moves, so more than half the game was entirely poor moves. I don't think we'll break that record, but we can always find out.